Guild Wars 2 next PvP season will be starting on Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. And there was a balance patch that hit the game a little bit about last week that changed a little bit of the meta. I made this video before, but since that balance patch, things have changed on Warrior, such as the utilities, which is what we're going to be talking about. After this video, you will be able to place in Plat in Guild Wars 2 PvP just from a few simple tips. The reason that I chose Warrior is because it's in a very good spot in PvP. It's very useful, has a lot of flexibility in where you can be on the map and where you can make an impact. And it's also very easy to learn with very little mechanics and also has quite a good amount of damage and sustainability without needing to press too many buttons at once. Because you can hold outnumbered fights and outnumbered fights actually give you an advantage whereas in most instances it would make life a lot more difficult for you but not with warrior the reason why is because warrior's full counter ability which i'll go over the abilities later but just know that that ability allows the 2v1s to be a lot better and in your favor so with that being said just know the couple mechanics that you should understand is warrior is really relies on the adrenaline gain that you get from being in active combat this allows you to do a lot of your burst skills and these burst skills have secondary and tertiary effects that can keep you in a fight longer modify your damage and also give you more boons additionally in ranked there's only a handful of classes that you really have to be aware of one of them being chronomancer at the current balance chronomancer is quite strong and can hold a tone against a warrior in a 1v1 duel. And Catalyst is another one that you should probably be wary about. But aside from that, you really can make a lot of mistakes and still have really good survivability and even beat classes such as Thief. Even if you miss your full counter a lot, which I highly recommend you don't. But if you do, just know that those classes are pretty easy to be countered by warrior, making you a lot better of a player just by the build itself. As far as rotations for this build in ranked, your primary goal is to go to the enemy's home node or your far node most of the time in the game. But the rotation, the easiness about rotating with warrior is that you can go far node and then you can go mid node. It doesn't, you don't really have to be in certain fights like say a support or like a hybrid damage, roaming damage. You can basically uh, kind of rotate around and make an impact anywhere. However, the strategy again once i recommend this is to get you to plot so what you should probably do is go push the far node if you can't push the home node and if there's any downtime or if your team is spread out around the map trying to hold one of their other nodes then go mid so be a fill-in be like uh be like the the cement that holds the concrete together or or whatever that is but just know the um, you're supposed to fill the gaps primarily and then go in team fights if needed now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the builds that i use and i will be sharing the build code in the description down below as well as some of the other links to my other content the twitch channel that i stream live on for guild wars 2 and other competitive games but also my twitter instagram handle and etc so please click down on the links below if you're interested in joining our community of degenerates so the next is the build. The build here is a pretty standard warrior build. You're going to be running defense, discipline, and spellbreaker. And you're also going to be using berserker amulet with divinity rune, dagger, shield, and greatsword. The sigils that I use personally on dagger shield is going to be energy and cleansing. You gain 25% uh, more endurance. This is what gives you more dodge rolls and cleansing removing condition one condition when you weapon swap on great sword you get the sigil of intelligence and the sigil of battle sigil of intelligence automatically makes your next three attacks have a hundred percent crit chance really good for quick combos from great or er, from stunning with your dagger shield going right into your great sword and arcing slice which you'll see in a few of my clips if you're watching the video associated with this the battle will give you four stacks of might as well so basically what you're doing is when you combo swap you go into your great sword to do your arcing slice you're going to get a little bit more damage because you're going to get those four stacks of might 
the discipline trait line, you'll be running the bottom trait, the middle trait, and the middle trait for your Grandmaster. Bottom is going to give more damage to enemies that you apply weakness to. This is important because your burst skills inflict weakness, which is your F1 skill uh, and your F2 skill. Also, you're going to be getting resistance on your dodge rolls, which will negate any sort of non-damaging conditions like fear, for uh, chill, slow, etc. And then cleansing ire also gives you adrenaline when you hit and removes a condition when you use a burst skill. The, uh, the minor traits are going to be the hardened armor, which resolution, you gain resolution when you block or struck by a critical hit. This has a 15 second cooldown, but once you get resolution, your, the strike damage is reduced by 10%. Adrenal health is going to keep you in the fight a lot longer, make you more sustainable because you'll be getting regeneration. You'll regenerate your health with this ability and this ability cannot be um, corrupted unlike regen so that's really strong and it makes warrior a little bit more reliable in those fights the protection when using a healing skill also going to negate damage coming into you so discipline is the must have trait on any warrior build well most of the warrior builds so the reason why is because you will have this minor trait which reduces your weapon swap time by five seconds and also, the weapon swaps will give you, the warrior, more adrenaline from some of the other traits. So, let's just look at it, right? You get 5 adrenaline whenever you weapon swap. You get 5 seconds uh, of weapon swap. You also can remove immobilizes, um, <laughs> immobilities from using your mobile skills. You cleanse the condition on weapon swap. You also gain might on weapon swap and your burst skills deal more damage plus you also have a reduced cooldown so basically this this revolves around weapon swapping which is really important for warrior these traits synergize really well which is why this is the must-have trait for warrior then spellbreaker this unlocks the full counter ability which you see in the video here basically uh you gain this orb around you and if somebody attacks you you do a full counter Basically, you gain an uh, evade, you cleanse a condition, you grant swiftness to yourself, you cripple your opponents, you slow your opponents, which are some of the other traits I'll go over. The stability is really important. You reduce damage as well, so you can't take any damage. And you also daze opponents. The number of targets you can daze is 5 as well, and the range is 300. So... People within one node, if you're fighting on a node and somebody hits your full counter, you're fighting two or three people. This is why outnumbered fights are more advantageous for Warrior. Because when you get up to fighting really good players, some of them will start baiting and avoiding your full counter. But let's say a second player comes in to fight you. Next thing you know, that person is just hitting your full counters left and right. And unfortunately, the other person has to be penalized for that because you have that 300 range. Some of the other traits, whenever you daze or stun an opponent, it inflicts immobilize. When your daze stuns, pulls knockbacks, also remove boons from your opponents. The full counter, as we mentioned, this trait applies cripple and slow. As you see there, they will get 50% reduction in movement speed and their abilities will be slower. The attacker's insight will gain you more damage application so this also can stack, maximum stack of 5. But when you disable a foe or remove their boons, your full counter refreshes all burst skills on hit. And also it gives you more damage. And then the Mage Bane Tether is a really strong ability when you're fighting classes that have stealth application. But also it keeps classes who have maybe a little bit more mobility from being able to run away from you. Because you tether them, right? And then it, will, it won't allow them to stealth. You gain might on application. You get increased damage. And then if they try to run away, it will pull them. The best part it is unblockable. So even if they're trying to block the pull, it won't work for them. The actual utilities are interchangeable here. However, these are what I keep on my bar. 
The Mending Heal is really strong because it cleanses conditions. It also has a 20 second cooldown, which is really fast. Gives you really good healing and also that protection. Featherfoot Grace, this could be interchanged with Shake It Off because they both do the same thing and almost the same thing, but they have the same cooldown. Shake It Off just cleanses conditions around you and your conditions cleanses four, also break stun, but Featherfoot Grace breaks stun, gives you resistance and super speed. Endure Pain just removes damage from, or it basically makes you invulnerable to physical damage. Bulls Charge gives you a, an, uh, it's, evade, it's an evade attack that makes you rush into your enemy. And it also removes Immobilize. And then Rampage, this is a really good skill that you can use for multiple reasons for either running away if you just need that stability so you don't get locked down and get hit with massive burst damage keeping yourself alive in the fight longer and also if you're looking to kill an opponent just by smashing them with your rocks or if you're looking for a stomp in a team fight where there's a lot of aoe or crowd control Now let's talk about some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to playing warrior that are just going to make you a better warrior player overall. We'll go over some of the, the do's first. Use your auto attack more on your abilities. This is going to help keep opponents guessing whenever you want to do a burst skill. Your opponent is just trying to avoid your burst ability. So if you're just auto attacking, which your auto attacks do a ton of damage more than some of the other skills, then you're going to keep them dodge rolling often and then that way they won't have any more dodge rolls that's when you land your your massive burst ability to get you all those different benefits the next tip the next do for warrior is to just be aggressive uh, warrior is specifically designed for maximum damage so you want to be pretty aggressive when you're fighting opponents that doesn't mean use your full counter on cooldown every time but that just means keep pressing W into your opponent, suffocate them, and basically assert your dominance by just hovering over them most of the time in the fight. Now, try to always get your full counter up. Make sure to use it, on, or try to use it on skills that you know your opponents cannot stow. What I mean by stow is, if I go in for an attack here, but I put cancel that attack, by putting my weapon away then it's not going to hit your full counter so if that happens right you want to be hitting your full counter on abilities that you know opponents can't stow most of the leap ones right like a two on a dagger i can't cancel that it's going to hit so you can use your full counter for that making sure that your opponent it's a guaranteed hit from your opponent another thing to do is if you do not land your full counter just be aware that you're kind of defenseless for a bit. I recommend, because your full counter does help you win a lot more fights, and it's it's the main reason Warrior can stay so strong. So if you miss your full counter, don't be afraid to just run away for a bit, reset it, so you can get back into the fight with your full counter. Because I've seen many Warriors who just stay in a fight when they don't have the full counter going. And next thing you know, they're dead for no reason when they could have just escaped and made sure to come back into the fight. So that goes into some of the don'ts on Warrior, right? Don't stay on a node for too long. You want to make sure that you are moving in and out of the node if you're in an outnumbered fight. Don't waste your dodge rolls. You have two of them, but you're a warrior. You're pretty sustainable. You have a lot of strength. You don't need to dodge every single attack. A dodge some of the attacks that are gonna make the most impact right the burst skills you want to dodge those because some of them can one shot you but you don't want to just randomly dodge some uh, auto attack if that makes sense another thing too is don't use your hunter blades right it's your two skill on your warrior this isn't really the best skill to be using and the reason why is it keeps you mobile and for the same amount of time the three and a half seconds that you you are able to attack you can basically get almost equal damage from using your auto attacks but the beauty is that you're able to move around your opponent so don't really ever use that even if you knock down an opponent right let's say like you have them down right here don't use it just use your auto attacks you're gonna land more damage with your auto attacks by 
than a full count or than hunter blades. So please don't do that. And the last but simple uh, common sense don't for warriors don't throw your life away. Even if you are just barely holding on, you're fighting an opponent on their node, and there's two of them, right? You just as long as you're keeping them there, you're keeping them out of the fight. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to throw your life away by engaging when you don't need to. Uh, so just make sure that you keep that in the back of your head whenever you're playing warrior, because I guarantee if you don't die, that's going to greatly increase your team's chance of winning, even if they're making more mistakes than you could possibly count on, you know, you and all your friends hands. So once again, if you follow these tips, just watch this video over again, study the gameplay that I have here in this video by the next season. I, I will see you in plat. I know you can do it. You will do it. This video will give you everything you need. And um, if that happens, yeah, tell me what you think about it, this in the video, if there's anything you like to see different. And if you are watching this during the season and you make it to plat, I'd like to hear that in the comments down below or in the discord, which is also in the link. So that's it for the video. Once again, just follow all these tips. Warrior is really strong. Make sure not to use hundred blades. Make sure that you uh, can keep outnumbered fights. Don't waste your full counter and use the build that we have in the link down below. I stream every week, Monday through Friday. Well, Monday, Wednesday, really, and have Discord nights. Uh, the is, information is gonna be in the link down below. If you like this video, please like it. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I will see you in the next one.